In the meantime, I'll organize all the information I got in the forest. I might find out the truth about the departed. The Departed's Wedding A sacred wedding ceremony that was held in an attempt to end the famine. The brides and grooms were carefully six were carefully the brides and grooms were carefully selected based on their intelligence, lineage, personality, and spiritual strength. Which is why the chosen ones were thought to be blessed and envied by many. The truth is, those chosen brides and grooms actually believed they'd have a blissful marriage. The two chosen brides were Mayumuras. They were obviously sisters. In one beautiful night, the gorgeous bridal procession advanced deep into the forest. They were headed toward Mushikabi Shrine. However, the marriage ceremony held at that place was far from the happy occasion they'd wished for. Instead of marrying their grooms, the brides were paired with the deities Mushigami and Kabigami. Before their beheaded grooms, they were prepared for their wedding to the deities. And that preparation included being given a makeover with bugs and mold. Over time, their skins were consumed by insects and mold. To keep themselves alive, they consumed both the insects and the mold. And that's how the women who resembled corpses were made worthy of becoming brides of deities. For a long, long time, they had to suffer with bugs and mold slowly eating away at their bodies. A brutal betrayal for brides who were deceived into thinking that they were destined for a happy marriage. Such an incident is cruel enough to have borne myriad grudges. I'm done reading. As you presumed, this was indeed about the departed's wedding. I shall give you a summary. I write down what Yasuoka says in my notebook. Alright. Mushigami Groom, Tsugu Kirajima, Jiro Uchikoshi had... The Brides, Mikiko and Michio. Da, da, da. It was a note about the religious oaths and the departed's wedding for the grooms, brides, and priests. Looks like the residents of the town forgot the ceremony procedures, given that it had been 100 years since it was last held. The chief priest of Mushikabi Shrine secretly wrote this memo for them. During the wedding ceremony in M Town, the two grooms shall present their brides with red threads and smear lipstick on their teeth. The ceremony is unique to M Town, where silkworm and safflower flourish. Previous brides have been overjoyed to be proposed to in such a traditional way. However, the departed's wedding is different. Instead of the grooms Mushigami and Kamigami, instead of the grooms Mushigami and Kabigami, men from the town shall present the brides with insects instead of red threads and smear mold upon them instead of lipstick. This betrothal ceremony shall last for several days. During this time, the bride shall eat bugs and molds to survive. The body shall continue to be consumed by insects and mold until they have turned into the departed, brides worthy of wedding the deities. Yasuoka's summary of the papers confirms what I saw in the vision. Although I've only learned maybe half of the truth of the situation, that much is enough to make my skin crawl and my stomach wretch. I've said everything I wanted to say to Yasuoka. And with that, I have all the keys I can possibly prepare. I don't know if this will be enough to battle against the Departed's enormous resentment. But still...
Are you going, Yashiki? Yeah. The Departed is calling me. I have to bring an end to this, this night. As much as I want to come along with you, I'm afraid I would only get in your way. My feet have been hurting after I fainted. I'm unable to run in my condition. It's fine. You can stay here. If I fail to come back, please take care of the rest for me. Understood. Do you know where the departed is? It's written in the notice. The clock tower, right below the oath bell. I see. Hear me out, Yashiki. Mashita risked his life for you. As did I, Sho, Diamond, and Hero. Everyone wanted to help you out. That is what they believed. Faith is a weapon to battle against fear, and that's how they were able to challenge those spirits. You're right. It's thanks to them that I'm here at this critical moment. So, Yashiki, you risk your life to pursue these spirits. But what drives you to do it? My motivation. Spare me talk of a sense of responsibility or obligation. Tell me what you hope to accomplish by hunting spirits. What made me start chasing spirits? Initially, it was because I didn't want to die. Four months ago, I pursued spirits to escape death. I managed to save the souls of those spirits, and I survived. That should have been the end of my dealings with spirits. Except it wasn't. I continued pursuing them, enduring the fear and putting my life on the line. Why did I do that? I can only think of one answer. I just can't ignore those who have stepped into darkness. Not only those who are targeted by spirits, but the spirits who are bound by the regrets who also want to be saved. I simply want to do what I can to help them. So, you want to save everyone. I'm not a saint, and know I can't save everyone. But, I want to reach up my hand as far as I can to as many people as I can. I don't care if that makes me sound like a hypocrite with a martyr complex. <laughs> you sound like a doctor. Maybe because I'm the spirit doctor. In that case, you should hang on to that hypocrisy. So that everyone, both the living and the dead, can be saved and rest peacefully. Yeah. It's still playing! Take care, Yashiki. Be sure to return. It's time to go to the clock tower. The departed awaits. I'm doing a badass walk to it. Uh, okay, never mind, I'm not. Oh, I was really hoping that the music was going to continue playing, you know? Because it went, it went so amazing, just like... Yeah. Departed, you won't escape me. It's time.
the clock tower. And the departed must be waiting inside to exchange vows with their groom. Me. Once I step inside here, this case is coming to some kind of conclusion. Though there is one matter left that I need to resolve before I enter this place. And that is, the true identity of the departed who has been hiding here in Konohihara Academy. In the Red Wedding Hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. Reading the notice, it seems like they want an answer. I won't have time to think about this once I'm inside, so now is the only time I'll have to think it over. There will be crucial choices after this. Once you make your choice, you won't be able to return to the infirmary until the story progresses. You may want to collect more lost souls and sacred objects and save your progress first. Shall we solve the departed's mystery? Okay, I'll... Let me give it some more thought. Um, I'll go and save. Seriously. Because I don't know if there's going to be certain aspects of this where I just can't access my items, and I do not want to get anything wrong, so... Alright, it's time. First of all, I have some speculations about their identity. About a hundred years ago, there were brides who were brutally murdered during a wedding ceremony in M-Town. Harboring grudges against all the residents while still longing for marriage, they were devoured by insects and mold. Their enormous grudges turned them into the departed. That much we know. Now the real question is, how did the departed hide it in the school? Toshihiko Izumi said the departed was pretending to be a human. If he was telling the truth, I have a feeling they transformed into someone I know. They would want to observe their groom, me, from nearby. People of Konohara Academy who interacted with me. Many of them were victims in the spirit cases. Naomi Horikoshi, Shinichi Kakuta, Bitsu Sakamoto. They're no longer here. I couldn't protect them. The ones who are still alive are the Headmaster, Seizo Kanoi, Himiko Doryo, Haruaki Abe, and Saki Marahashi. And, Michu and Michio Kinokawa, whose status is unknown. Michio died at the clock tower last night. But if she was the departed, her death would not prove her innocence. There's also the matter of the things we noticed at her dorm room. There's clearly something odd about that room. It's safe to say Michio Kinokawa is a prime suspect. Let's start deducing now. Assuming the departed is among the ones still alive, we can exclude Mr. Konoe and Abe. The departed is said to be a bride, and the ones who hold the grudges are female, so it stands to reason that they'd transform into a girl. This is still just conjecture, obviously. But without solid evidence, I'm going to have to make some assumptions to narrow down the suspects to the most likely candidates. What about Maruhashi? It's not her. I didn't meet her until Mr. Kokuri's case. Before that, the departed attacked both I and Sho after learning about my friendship with them. Maruhashi doesn't know that they're my friends, so the chances of her being the departed are slim. Dorio is rather suspicious. Together with Michiho, she's been helping me from the very beginning. 
Additionally, she knows all about the case and is quite interested in me. We can assume Himiko Dorio is a suspect. This is just a possibility, but... If Michiho and Dorio are the departed, their smiles when they called my name and when they told me they believed in me. It all came from the dead. That reality would be a bitter pill to swallow. However, there's still another possibility. And that's the fact that Izumi might not have been telling the truth. Izumi was going insane at that time. He might not have intended to lie, though that's not to say that he didn't lie either. If we consider that possibility... The female doll would seem suspicious. We were eaten by Mushikabi. Her last words match the ritual scene I saw in my mind. Especially because the word we could refer to the two brides. Two souls with the same resentment turned into a single spirit. And that spirit is the departing. The possibility is there. We can assume the female doll is also a suspect. Unlike a detective novel or police drama, we're not going to just turn up definitive evidence in a spirit case like this. Despite that, I still have to make a choice. Among the three likely candidates, which is the departed? I can't afford to make a mistake. Michio Kinukawa is... This is the obvious answer, and again I did save, so I don't think it's her. Himiko Dorio is not the departed. The female doll is not the departed. It's none of them. None of them are the none of them are the departed. Is this my final answer? Yes. I know my answer. Time to go to the clock tower. Everything will be clear there. Whether I like it or not. The door to the clock tower is open. If I'm wrong about this, then I just overthought it. The Departed is waiting for me up ahead. Can't even imagine what will happen next. Inhale the clear night air and breathe it out. Then, I push the door open. handprints all over the wall. They're red mold, not blood. Same type of mold as on the notices. The tower wasn't like this before. The clock tower has changed. Is this also the work of the departed? What is this dreadful sensation filling the air? The power of the curse is overwhelming. I have to put an end to it quickly. One arm-shaped clump of red mold is emerging from the wall. T 
two arm shaped clumps of red mold are emerging from the wall. Yeah, I, I understand. Th this place is. It doesn't make sense. Why am I back in the room with the. F Why am I back in the room filled with handprints? Something beyond my comprehension is happening right now. Crap, this is bad. The curse is slowly eating my body. My body won't last if I don't put a stop to this right now. Okay, yeah, I remember now. So one. Then we go down. Then we go back up. Then we go back down. Whoop. What's that? Something's rolling on the floor. Th this is... The broken remains of the female doll. But how? What happened? With the pain from the curse and the agitation from the surprise, my head's about to burst. Calm down. Just calm your ass down. So I say to myself over and over again. Then I inspect the broken female doll. Her limbs are missing. Only her head, dress, and some broken pieces remain. When I look closely at the broken pieces, I see something resembling teeth marks. This is most likely from a bite. Was she devoured by the departed? The departed grew stronger after devouring the doll, which turned the lights in the special building red. It does make sense. I hear a faint voice. Is this the doll's voice? Take me. Me. What do you want to say? Eat me. Protect you from Red Curse How am I supposed to eat you? Her voice goes silent. What did the female doll say? Take me, eat me to protect you from the red curse. I still don't get it. However, this doll mustered all of her remaining strength just to say that to me, so I can't ignore her words. I'd better take her corpse with me. Obtained the head of the female doll. Obtained red dress. The malicious disturbance that was happening in this place has subsided. It makes me feel a little better. Is this all thanks to this female doll? The final confrontation. The departed harbors a massive grudge while also longing to exchange vows with their groom. A document I found on M-Town's ceremony mentions that the etiquette and tools used all have great significance. I need to remember all of this in case some trivial thing can be used against the departed. The female doll's last words concerned me. She told me to bring her to protect myself. What did she mean by the red curse and eat me? Do I really have to? Nothing makes sense. So much is at stake. Who do I believe? Who do I doubt? Time's running out. I have to make a decision. The fragments of the female doll are scattered on the floor. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. What does it mean? The ruined head of the female doll when I found it. I heard a faint voice saying, Eat me to protect you. It sounded like she used every last bit of her strength to say it. A bright red dress the female doll wore, lovingly made with red silk. It's as gorgeous as a wedding dress. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I made the wrong choice back at the clock tower. Or back at the beginning. 
I climbed the ladder once again. Where will this ladder take me this time? Will I end up climbing the clock tower for all eternity without an exit? My mind conjures up numerous ominous predictions like this, one after another. Except I know that can't be how this ends. But the depart at once is a wedding ceremony, and the groom is needed for that to happen. I guess this ladder is like a vertical wedding aisle. And waiting for me at the end will be... my bride. I find myself in a bright red room. The stone walls and floors are covered with red mold. There are strange plants growing on the floor that look like overgrown moss. A sight that you'll never see in nature. Did the departed cause this paranormal phenomenon? There's an altar in the middle of the room. It's an altar that would be the center of a western-style wedding. This'll be the end of my walk down the aisle, then. I take the notice out and check it. In the Red Wedding Hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. This place must be the Red Wedding Hall. There, I should call the departed by the name they've been using at school. Except I haven't come up with an answer. If the departed is neither Michiho, Dorio, or the female doll, who the hell are they then? <coughs> but this is. The room is filling with mold. It's getting hard to breathe. Good lord. You did not get it. Who are they? What is the departed's identity? I believed in you. What a shame, dear husband. I hear a voice from behind me. And when I turn around... <laughs> you are not my real husband. Still, I love you. Let us exchange a brief vow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I made the... I played mind tricks on myself. Thank you, dear husband. Goodbye. And what was left was everything there of a spirit doctor. ニュースです。Just to preface the reason why I said it wasn't any of them. The doll said that at that time, 
they died, and they were returned back into one. Michiho and Dorio are the departed, not the female doll. Is this my final answer? Yes. I swear if I'm wrong again, like, I'm gonna be upset at myself for being so stupid. The departed has been hiding in Konohara Academy. Your real name is... Michiho Kenokawa and Himiko Dorio. A voice echoes throughout the room. There's no answer at all, only the heavy silence filling the air. I expected nothing less of you, my dear husband. I believed in you. So at that time, I was on the money with them. Two people appeared before my eyes. Dorio, Michiho. I was hoping I was wrong. However, my guess was on the mark. Dear husband, we've been watching you while hiding in the school the whole time. Dear husband, we tested you to see if you're worthy of being our real husband or not. Both of them sound dead. Their eyes are lifeless. They don't look like the Dorio and Michiho I came to know. You two are... The Departed's Brides, the Mayumura Sisters, Mikiko and Michio Mayumura. Right. Sisters was the key to unlocking the truth. The Departed wasn't just one entity hiding at the school, it was two. I had proof that Michio was the Departed, which meant that the person who received the curse at the same time would also be the Departed. Dorio, bearing that mark on her face, is displaying the evidence that she's indeed the Departed as well. Then, are you the one who caused all the spirits to appear? That is correct. So the spirit I saw clinging to Dorio's back was fake. The groom only needs his bride. The bride only needs her groom. Everyone else is unnecessary. If they're allowed to keep using the dead to cause more casualties, the damage will be incalculable as their victims become new spirits. More and more people will die until the bride and groom are all that remain. That's the ending the Departed desires. I have to stop this twisted madness at any cost. Dear husband, you have shown us your brilliant intelligence. <laughs> you managed to learn the truth about us without being deceived by sympathy or fake deaths. Dear husband, you have shown us your impeccable lineage. Due to your bloodline, you were able to see, hear, and face the spirits. Dear husband, you have shown us your stunning personality. Having formed an emotional bond with us brides, you must have up the courage to push through your fear for us. You're not like those weak, fragile beheaded men, or the coward who fled from the notice. You're different from those fake grooms. Dear heavens, you truly are a real husband. What are you going to do to me? We are the departed's brides and groom. Let us exchange our marriage vows in this red wedding hall and spend our days in this Mushikabi chamber forever after. That is the happy ending we long for. But, Mikiko... Dear husband, looks delicious. 
I can't control myself anymore. Dear husband. No. Micho's face changes before my eyes. How terrifying. Is this the departed's true form? One bite. I want to bite husband. Every time she speaks, the insects coming out of her mouth move with her legs. What is that black liquid dripping from her mouth? Is that her saliva? Does she see me as food? I'm completely disoriented. My mind can't process everything before me. I feel like the last thin thread of my sanity is going to snap. Do not rush, Michiho. We must exchange vows first. Days, weeks, and months from now, a husband's body shall be dyed in Mushikabi's color. His organs shall be infested with mold, and he'll be filled with insects, making him beautiful. We need to wait until that time, all right? One bite, bite. What a troublesome child. Dear husband, you are a bad man. Because you really do look delicious. Dear husband. So it was your voice that was the departed. <laughs> the mark on Doria's face starts spreading like mold, distorting her face. Is that insightly look on her face supposed to be joy? I'm quaking in fear just looking at her. I can't even muster a scream. Want to bite? Want to bite? You know, you actually don't look as scary as I thought you would. Yes, yes, you want to eat me. They can no longer control their ravenous hunger. The figures of two brides who longed for a wedding are no longer here. Instead, what I'm seeing now are two long dead spirits who are warped by madness. Mikiko, shall we bite him together? Michio, let us bite him together. Oh, also the other similarity, like Michio and Michiho. You know, that's obvious. But Mikiko and Himeko. It's a bit less obvious, but you can kind of see the similarities there as well. Ah, oh, interesting. Dori and Michiho look at each other. Then, they hug one another. Their arms and legs intertwine, body pressed against body, sticking like glue. I... hmm... After repeating the same motion several times... What is... Fusion? Ha! The boundary between the two disappears, and they have united into one. Look, dear husband. Look at us. We have consumed the Scarlet Marionette.
Okay. What? Oh, n mm. And when the candlestick is real lit. Dear husband. You know, that transition was a lot cooler. And I... That was a lot more pleasant to look at before the red walls of blood came down. Am I... Beautiful now? <laughs> My mind and body are overwhelmed by fear, like I'm a toad hypnotized by a serpent. The departed has gained a new form from the swirling red mold. The grotesque looking demon coming out of a doll's bulging belly. I can feel her intense emotion as her four eyes stare me down. And that emotion is desire. The scarlet desire to devour their beloved and usher them to their demise. Can I? Is it even possible to save them? Dear husband, let me bathe all of you in the color of insects. A flood of insects issue forth from their mouth and assault me. If this keeps up, I'll be eaten alive by bugs. But I can't give up here. What should I do? Suspensive Act. Act 1. Here, have this frog. <laughs> Grasped... Grasp the frog for comfort, or hold it towards the insects. I hold up the dried up frog to cover myself from the attacking bugs. I hold the dried up frog in front of me. At the moment I lay my hand on the frog, I remember what that voice told me earlier. Frogs drive away bugs. This might work then. The departed sneers as the insects pour forth and attack. But then the insects disperse into the darkness to avoid the frog. Looks like this is the right choice. The departed shrieks in anger upon seeing the insects leave. They seem to be muttering something. What the heck are they saying? Bugs? No. Is it mold? Just as I think to that, just as I think that to myself, a sharp pain runs throughout my arm. Not again! Mold starts growing on my arm. Ugh. So now they're going with mold, huh? I can feel the mold spreading throughout my body. I feel like vomiting. Dear husband, let me bathe you in the color of mold. I'll get consumed by mold at this rate. No time to sit around. Oh, this is the Mark 2.0. I need to do something before this damn mold covers my whole body. Except I don't really have an idea of what I need to do. Let's believe there are clues somewhere, because if I don't do something, I'll be dead. The doll did say...
grabbing the female doll's head and try eating a piece of it. Oh, my sweet porcelain chip. The moment I lay my hand on the doll's broken remains, I remember what that voice said at that time. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. A little bit nervous, I warily took a bite of the female doll's head. It's an unpleasant sensation, like I'm chewing on a stone, and then the clay texture and taste start to spread inside my mouth. Making up my mind, I swallow it down. At that moment, both the mold and the unpleasant nausea disappear in an instant. Looks like this is the right choice. The departed sounds distraught after seeing both the insects and mold cleared away. Holy crap, you are gigantic. Letting out a roar, they approach me. Are they going to eat me now? My beloved husband, let me bite you. Here we go again. The departed won't ever be satisfied until they kill me. Although, if the Mayumar sisters are the departed, do they really want my death? The Mayumar sisters long for a blissful marriage. Tell me, this bloody ritual can't be the dream wedding that you always wanted. What is it that you really want? Dear husband. Is that their answer? They sound sad. Right at that moment, I hear something distant from the darkness shrouding my vision. Give it back. that voice just now. By give it back, do you mean? <laughs> Shit, it's not working, huh? I'm pretty sure the voice just now is the departed's true feelings, but they've returned to being their mad monster form. Can I bite you? Bite, 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 bite. Chaigan, Chaigan. I guess you really can't communicate with a spirit, huh? But at least I've got a clue now. I might be able to save the departed soul using that clue. There's something I need to give back to them. Probably something used in the celebration, given that this is a wedding. The dress? It's the only thing I can think of. Oh, yeah, great. Fantastic. I just got them breathing down my neck. I don't know what bless is. Let's try it. Holding up the red dress, I try to congratulate them. Congratulations! 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 I'd hold up the red dress and offer them a word of prayer. May this red dress be blessed! Is this enough? Dear husband. They wail and insects come pouring out of their body. I immediately hold up the dried up frog to repel the insects, but the frog ends up damaged. This dress isn't the thing that should be blessed. I guess this won't save the departing. 
Offer the Floriography for Acceptance, Offer the Floriography for Independence, or Offer the Floriography for Passion. Yes. Here you go, Mademoiselle. I remember seeing the Floriography for Spider Lilies in the book I read at the library way back then. Seriously? Was it Acceptance? Let me give you a word of blessing. And that word is acceptance. Your soul should be saved now. Dear husband. They wail, okay, this is not the right answer. Do I even have that book? No, of course I don't. I got rid of that thing, like, ages ago. Yeah, wait. Oh. This. That's right. It's in the old book. And we smear the vermilion ink on the teeth. That's right. Okay. Dipping my finger on the vermilion ink, I call out to the departed. Come closer. Let me paint your teeth red. Dear husband. The whale insects come pouring out of their body. I immediately hold up the dried up frog. I need to step closer to paint the vermilion ink on the departed, but I also really don't want to go near them. Yes. Be presented with red threads. I carefully present the red dress to the departed. Holding the dress with both hands, I get down on my knees and offer it to the departed. I shall give you this dress. Vermilion thread. Give. The departed mutters something with a smile. Did they just tell me to give them vermilion thread? I'm pretty sure this dress is made of red silk thread, so it should fit the bill. Is this the standard custom during a real wedding? Is this the celebration you want? The departed stares at me in silence. They seem somewhat bewildered. I guess this is evidence that I've stirred something in their heart. Looks like this is the right choice. The departed takes a slow, deep breath. Perhaps the departed longs to experience a traditional M-Town wedding ceremony. Remember, the true vows you long for. The departed starts breathing heavily. Did that trigger a memory of something? Letting out a roar, they approach me. Can I bite you? Shit. Guess that's not it. The departed has gone insane once again. They're on the verge of devouring me. However, there's no way I can give up here. Think. Damn it, there must still be something I can do! What the departed bride wants is a traditional wedding. Like the groom usually gives something to their bride. But it's still not enough. What else should I do? Smear it on the teeth. I mean, it's, it's weird, but... It, you know what, I'm not to judge. I open the vermilion ink container to apply to the departed's teeth. This better work, because I am donezo. Dipping my finger in the vermilion ink, I call out to the departed. Let us exchange our wedding vows. Let me paint your teeth red. <laughs> cool. so. 
I feel like the departed isn't as deranged as they were before. Now is the time. Oh, we gotta bring back the old theme for the finale of Deathmark. And nervously extend the fingers are coated with vermilion ink toward the departed. This is what's written in the chief priest's note I found at Mushikabe Shrine. At wedding ceremonies in M Town, the groom is supposed to give the bride vermilion thread and paint her teeth red. All the M Town brides were overjoyed to be on the receiving end of this traditional practice. Using what I've got, a dress made with red silk thread would equate to giving the bride vermilion thread. And smearing red ink on their teeth aligns with painting their teeth red with lipstick. So if I were to do that now... I gently smear the vermilion ink on the departed's teeth, giving them a blessing. The departed. This is the blessing that I, your groom, give to you. My bride! After a long silence, her lips curve into a smile. Then... Dear husband, for so long... For so, so long... For... You... After muttering such a thing... <laughs> the departed disappears with a cry that is only neither filled with love nor hatred. Looks like this is the right choice. Ugh, survived by the skin of my teeth. This should be good. Or is it? Did the departed regain their lost blessings so they can finally rest in peace? I really hope that's the case. However, a cold wind refuses to stop blowing through the gaping hole in my heart. Dorio, Michiho. For a while, I simply stand rooted to the spot, stunned and distraught. Then, I think about the way those girls simply disappeared without regaining their consciousness. I remember the look on their faces when that happened. They were... Smiling for some reason. It's time to go. Now that I've managed to survive this ordeal somehow, there are some things that I must do. As I descend, I notice that the red handprints on the wall have now vanished. I assume that all of the other strange phenomena have ceased after the departed's departure. The clock tower is frozen in time. But the hand... Bet the hands won't move ever again. Because the two students who wanted to make that happen for the school's 70th anniversary are no longer with us. I better get out of here. Now Sawoka's waiting for me. The 
The vengeful Mayumura sisters who took Michiho and Dorio's bodies were the culprits. They longed for a happy marriage with their chosen groom, even after death. While I can't be their real husband, I hope the red thread and lipstick were enough to fulfill their wishes. The girls in my vision were school age. Were they able to wash away some of their resentment after experiencing their stolen youth? As a spirit doctor, I'd like to believe I set them free from their curse. I hope their smiles before they faded is the answer to my question. I shall let Yasuaka know how this case ended. Welcome back, Yashiki. The spirit that was possessing Yasuoka was gone now, and the light in the infirmary is no longer red. Is it... over? Yeah. You did well. Where's Dorio? Yashiki. Yasuoka looks at me with gentle eyes. She then follows with a slight, knowing nod. Things happened, I see. Just tell me whenever you're ready. No rush. I'm sorry. Want me to answer that? No, it's fine. I'll do it. Moshi Mosh. Try being a bit more cheery, will ya? This annoyed tone and these harsh words. You're alive, Mushta? Yep, I failed to die. I lost my phone, so I couldn't call. It took me a while to find a working public phone. Thank God you managed to escape. I was sprinting through that damn forest so hard I wanted to puke the whole time. They almost caught my ass several times, but luckily for me, they disappeared midway through the chase. They probably decided to go be with their husband rather than playing tag with me. How did it go on your end? It's over. The departed has vanished. Oh, okay. Then... Did you... save the departed? I don't know. I did what I could. Then why do you sound like you're at a funeral? Puck the hell up, man. Mission accomplished. You should be proud of yourself. Nobody thinks you're cruel cool for doing what needed to be done. Sorry, but I'm not really in the mood for that. Yeah, not surprised at all. I'm heading there now. Give me the details once I'm there. Bye. That was Mashita, wasn't it? I'm glad he's safe and sound. He said he's coming here. Shall we leave once he arrives, then? You should rest, Yashiki. I'll contact the headmaster for you. Thanks, Yasuoka. I'm touched by Yasuoka's thoughtfulness. Since the last scene is so vivid in my mind, I don't think I can deliver a professional report to the headmaster right now. By the way, Yashiki, why are you holding on to that? Oh, you mean this? I hadn't even realized it, but I'm clutching something I picked up in the clock tower. It's the female doll's head and dress. They saved my life. There's no particular reason. Maybe I'm just feeling sentimental.
HC の空を冷たい秋の風が吹き抜けるその夜誰もいない学園から鳴り響く鐘を何人かの近隣住民が耳にした鐘の音はすすり泣くような寂しく悲しげなものだったという弔いの鐘とすればそれは他がためのものなのか怪異を追われ殺されたこの事件の犠牲者たちかあるいは死人にその身を奪われた姫子と道穂遠い過去に死人の嫁入りで生き絶えた哀れな娘たちかいずれにしても死人を取り巻く一連の怪事に終わりを告げる金なのかもしれないだがこれで全てが終わりではない仮にも怪異化を名乗るとすれば魂の想念に触れたものとしてそれぞれの死をさらに深く見つめなくてはならないたとえそこにいかなる恐怖や困難痛みが待つとしてもあの日心に刻まれた印にそして愛する者と亡き者たちに柔らかな日がさすその日まで。Chapter 7 The Departed's Wedding End I'm not a man. 
Do you want to view the creditor backers? Yeah, of course. 62 pages. Oh my god. I'm hoping that I can look at this later. If I can't, I'm going to be upset. I know I say that a lot, but save your progress. Why do I need to save my progress? A week has passed since that night. Konohar Academy hasn't changed much since my first visit. Though this is only the calm before the storm, even though the spirit has vanished, the truth and the havoc they wrought still remain. Weekly magazines and the like have been littered with articles about mysterious disappearances at an each city school. It's only a matter of time before the pest descends upon the school. When that happens, students will lose their normality once again. But there's nothing I can do about that. I walk past the students and enter the school. Unlike my first visit here, the bell doesn't ring. Oh, you're here, Yashiki. Apologies. I've been quite busy lately. I've had my hands full with parents and police asking for explanations about the students who have disappeared. Though all I can do is tell them that I don't know anything more than they do. And so I get called an irresponsible headmaster, <laughs> Quite a few people have gone missing in a short amount of time, and yet we can't share what actually transpired. Being thrust into the limbo between reality and the spirit world, he's got a pretty tough situation. Sooner or later, I'll likely have to resign. Someone will be made to bear responsibility for these incidents. I've got no regrets, though. The case is solved, and I can hold my head high knowing what happened. Mr. Kanoe. I've read your report. I feel absolutely terrible for Sakamoto. And I can't believe Dorio and Kinokawa were actually the departed. I have no intention of revealing the truth, obviously. It's not like that would allay the concerns of anyone. We shall consider them to be missing persons, like Sakamoto and the others. That should be fine. The real versions of them are victims, too. Actually, I was curious as to why the departed pretended to be Dorio and Kinokawa in order to hide them among the students. There doesn't seem to be a need to mingle with everyone here in order to simply find a husband. I don't know either. There are a number of things concerning the departed that still don't make any sense to me. Such as, why were they in the clock tower? Hmm... 
Maybe you'll get a bit more closure about that matter if you read this. He proceeds to hand me a leather journal from the nearby desk. This journal belonged to my grandfather, the first headmaster of Konohara Academy. A relative found this at their home and sent it my way. I know now isn't exactly the ideal time for you to see this, but feel free to take your time looking it over. Thanks. I'll borrow this then. I guess that's all from me. But... Let me thank you one last time. I appreciate all your help, Yashiki. You helped me save Konohara Academy. I also wanted to extend my sincere apologies for being harsh with you. Oh, don't worry about that. I know you were desperate to save both the school and the students. I'm glad you understand. That reminds me, Diamond will be here today. Why don't you go talk to him? Sure thing. I say goodbye to Mr. Konoe and leave the faculty room. Daimon has been waiting in the infirmary. Long time no see, Yashiki. How are you feeling, Daimon? I think resting in that hospital bed actually did me some good. I'm feeling better. Well, better is relative for me. <coughs> he's still got that lingering cough, but his voice is full of life. Seems like he's fully recovered. Sorry I had to abandon you midway. I ended up forcing everything on you. All the responsibility and emotional trauma. Marshita told me about Hiro's final moments when he came to visit me at the hospital. What? I got her involved in this. If only I didn't ask her, she would be... No. It's my fault. I'm the one who failed to protect her while she was helping me. Oh, no! I loaded up the wrong save! Diamond and I fall into silence for a while. It's as if we're both offering silent prayers. Many people died because of this case. It's a bit sad and lonely knowing no one will ever learn the truth besides those of us who were involved. True. Let us remember those who died at the very least. It's a cross that all of us who were involved in the incident will have to bear. Nevertheless, we live on, believing that we will save someone else another day. It's a remark Diamond said during Hanako's case. The suffering of a doctor who constantly has to face the grim reality of death. Despite that, he's still determined to save others. I comprehend the weight of those words a bit more now. Aha, I'll keep that in mind. Having the spirit doctor tell me that made me feel blessed to be the doctor. Say, Yashiki. I hope you keep pushing ahead in your own way, despite all the struggles that come. There's gotta be someone out there who's just waiting for you to extend your hand. I finish my conversation with Daimon, say my goodbyes and leave the infirmary. Then I head straight out of the school. find myself at the front gate. School's been over for a while, so there are a few students milling about. I look at the school one last time before I leave. Many lives were lost in this one month. Students, teachers, and my friends. The regrets won't go away even though the case has been closed. 
and leaves a scar in my heart. I'm sorry, hero. I skimmed through the first headmaster's journal that Mr. Kanoe loaned me. The stuff written inside is related to the female doll and the departed. The first headmaster knew about M-Town's horrific ritual, the departed's wedding. He apparently learned about it from a former M-Town resident. He wanted to offer condolences to the victims of the ritual and those who were claimed by the Departed's wrath. He particularly pitied the Mayumura sisters, whose dreams of a happy marriage was betrayed. Inside the clock tower that was built to celebrate Konohara Academy's 10th anniversary, he built a room as a memorial service, complete with an altar where he offered a western doll. That doll was the female doll in the scarlet dress. He got it from someone who dealt in supernatural items. It's said that the female doll was made to be an offering for a pitiful soul and had hidden spiritual power. Learning that, the headmaster believed the doll could soothe the souls of the Mayumura sisters. He then dressed the doll in a beautiful bridal gown. In his mind, he was being thoughtful to the sisters, who had their matrimonial wishes twisted into a grotesque ritual. His love for antique things was probably what led him to choose the red dress over a now-traditional white gown. The first headmaster may have thought he was helping, by romanticizing the tragedy of the two brides eventually led to this disaster. The deep-seated grudge of the Mayumara sisters remained in the Konohara area, and that grudge began dwelling inside the female doll. Eventually, the departed was born. And that's where the journal ends. The first headmaster passed away after that. Perhaps the departed's curse killed him as well. He set the events in motion, and then... Sixty years later, the departed appeared at Konohara Academy. No one can ever truly know how or why such things occur. We can only imagine and speculate. After the first headmaster's death, the female doll disappeared. It was taken from the clock tower, or at least the part normal people could access. The place the doll ended up must have been the Red Room, somewhere only the Departed could access. They were awaiting a new vessel other than the doll, one in which they could make their dream of a happy marriage come true. That replacement finally came after so many years. I was right on the money! One summer break, two female students visited in the clock tower. The students were the real Michiho Kinokawa and Himeko Dorio. They were there for the clock tower renovation project to commemorate the school's 70th anniversary. The departed brought them to the altar room, and... They killed them using the curse of insects and mold claiming their bodies and memories. The 
The older sister, Mikiko Mayumura, became Himeko Doryo, while the younger sister, Michio, turned into Michio Kinukawa. Then they hid in the school, attempting to find a husband that was suitable to fulfill their wish for a happy marriage. The rest is history. The departed used other spirits and notices as tests for their groom candidates. The Dorio and Michio I'd come to know were fakes. Everything was an act. Despite that, both of them looked and acted far too human. Their warm words, their gentle smiles and innocence, did they really need to go so far just to test me to see if I was worthy of marriage? Why did they do all that? This is just a hunch. But maybe when the departed stole Dorio and Michiho's memories, they might have noticed there were other ways to satisfy their deep, unrealized wishes. Dorio called that possibility love. The departed spent their days in the school trying to stay near their husband, having conversations and swapping smiles like any other youths. Born in a feudal town a hundred years ago, maybe they'd never had the opportunity to experience that before. As a result, their love for their husband grew. This would have been something that they truly treasured. That might have been how they could act so naturally, protecting that glittering youth. Who knows, maybe they even wished they could just continue living in that way. Except they were spirits. They couldn't escape their sanguinolent fate. In order to fulfill their desire for marriage, they ended up choosing the spirit's path. Perhaps it was the only way they knew to get what they craved. Dear husband, for so long, for so, so long, for you. I wonder what The Departed was trying to say at that time. Did it have something to do with love? Even their intense resentment disappeared just by imitating M-Town's traditional wedding. Was that also because of their love? If that's true, my strange life as a teacher and the time I spent with them was not so in vain. Because of that way, the memories we made together are what ended up saving those girls. The Departed A terrifying spirit that killed a lot of people in the last two months. Though considering their grudges and wishes, they were also poor victims themselves. The terror and sadness that filled them. After learning both sides of the coin. I... I want to... Forgive the departing. I reach for my cup after that. Chugging down the liquid inside, I get up from my seat and check the time. The day has already changed. Oh no. Late at night. Guess it's that time. Time to start working. I head to my room on the second floor. And then...
All right, all done. I finally managed to fix it. I was able to use the techniques I learned at the workshop I found when looking up information about doll care. Though it's fixed, her soul won't come back. This female doll saved my life. The departed's grudges moved from this doll to Dorio and Michiho. So who was the spirit inhabiting this doll? I have a hunch. It may have been the souls of the real Michiho and Dorio. Those two girls were brimming with spiritual energy, which is likely why the departed chose to claim their bodies. I have a hunch that their souls dwelled inside the doll after they were killed. The way the doll's appearance changed as the departed transformed might be evidence that the girl's souls were still connected to their bodies. So the doll was wandering around the school without their memories, not knowing what to do. Despite being in that confused state, their fear and resentment of the departed still remained. That's why they helped me. Still, what's the point of me fixing this doll? It's not like it'll speak again if it's mended. Plus, even if it were to talk, what useful information would it possibly have for me? As far as I know, the souls contained inside this doll belong to the actual Michio and Dorio. Not the fake versions who considered me their teacher. It's a pointless undertaking, and I have a feeling it'll only make me feel emptier inside. So why do I keep doing this? I guess it's a form of prayer. It won't change anything, though I also believe that it wasn't for nothing. I believe some souls will be saved if I do this. Hang on a little longer, you two. Mr. Yashiki? Persevered to the good ending? Obtained all achievements? What? That's it? Wait, so Hero's just dead then. That didn't matter. It didn't matter if I saved them. Oh, Yashiki. Hello. What are you doing here, Ai? Diamond told me you'd be here today. Looks like I almost missed you, huh? It's all because Sho keeps slowing me down. Oh, shut it with your bullshit. You're the one that fall here. What's the point in making me dress like this, even though the case is over? The case is over, but we're still gonna stick out like a sore thumb if we wear casual clothes to a school. Plus, this is another great chance to wear the Konoe Horror Academy uniform. You look good in that blazer, show. Yikes! Stop it. You're giving me the creeps. I would have passed if I'd known it'd be like this. Yeah, totally. And I definitely did not forget to save you last time. I worked seven days straight and I finally got a day off. I just want to lay on the couch and drink. Hmph. <laughs> Both of you complain way too much. Looks like I invited both of them here. It feels like it's been an eternity since we all saw each other last. 
I asked some of the others too, but apparently they already had plans today. Glad to see you're doing well, old man. Cause you looked like a zombie when we were on the case. But is that so? You've got some bags under your eyes though. Have you been staying up late? Oh, you mean this? I've been doing some work at home. Sometimes I get too caught up in my work, and by the time I realize it, the sun's creeping through the blinds. You're still living that kind of life even after the case? You're one hell of a night owl. Rest is just as important as work, Yashiki. Should we go and grab something good to eat? I like that idea. Men know a good ramen shop. They pile on the pork and green onions. Why ramen? Cake is much better, right Yashiki? No, I... You don't have to work hard today. You don't have to work hard today, right Yashiki? You're gonna collapse if you don't take a breather once in a while. And you're not good at that. Fine. In the end, I let myself be dragged to both a popular ramen place and a cake shop. I and Sho are as bubbly as ever, while Hero chimes in occasionally with sardonic comments. Observing the scene in front of me, it feels like this is the first time I've been able to have a normal, ordinary day in quite a while. However, there's a strange feeling that I can't shake, as if I'm walking around in shoes that don't fit. I guess this is what readapting to mundane life feels like. Guess I'm just too used to having dark, unnatural forces inserting themselves into my life. Hold on, there's a reason why both of them are defending me. Among all the teachers, I'm the only one who's taking their concerns seriously and pursuing the departed. Ugh, this departed nonsense again. Really? You really think you have carte blanche to do anything just because you're investigating the departed? Takai, Izumi, Horikoshi, and Kakuza. Four Konohara students who have mysteriously disappeared in a short period of time. I'm sure you realize how unnatural that looks, don't you? Th that... I'm not asking you to believe in spirits, but you need to understand that I'm the only adult here that's trying to do something about those students' disappearances. Mr. Yashiki. And they're just trying to help me. They want to bring peace and normality back to the school, and they're trying to help in whatever way they can. That's all that's going on. Sakamoto leaves the faculty room without saying anything. Okay, so... That's that, I guess. Right, I forgot. I got a call from Miss Sakamoto earlier. Uh, did you get scolded again? No, the opposite. She apologized because she felt like she went too far about the stuff with you. Oh. Is it because of what I said to her? How very kind of her to take immediate action after she changed her mind. Isn't that great, Mr. Yashiki? She won't be picking on you anymore. I hope that's true. How's your investigation going, by the way? Did you learn anything new? Not a lot, but... Is Miss Sakamoto not here today? 
She actually came today, but she had to leave early because she was feeling under the weather. Her face was really pale, and even standing upright seemed to cause her an immense amount of pain. It's looking like she must have been possessed by a spirit as well. While well, Mr. Konoe and the students don't look so good, they don't seem to be suffering as much as Sakamoto. Maybe the spirits are affecting everyone differently? Goodness, maybe some malicious disease is spreading on our campus. Our school really is cursed. Well, yes. I leave the faculty room after saying goodbye to Mr. Kanoe. He looks rather worried. Oh? What... what is this? I hear the sound of a bell. But why? The departed should be gone. What should I do? Alright, so this is a sort of crossroads. If you decide to return to the collector, you get some really good stuff that happens, right? But you could also choose to ignore it and leave and you get an extra bonus scene, so... The following things that happen are going to be a result of which choice you make here. So for now, we're just going to ignore it and leave. I turn my back on the clock tower and start walking. Before long, the sound of the bell ceases. And it never rings again. Well, well, if it isn't Mr. Yashiki. There is no other man in a coat who looks quite as melancholic as you do. Now, this reunion is certainly a cause for celebration. I'm glad to see you are doing well. You haven't changed a bit, Abe. I heard about your success from my master. They said the dark clouds covering the school had been cleared because you saved the departed's poor, wretched soul. We're in travel to you pretty quickly. Makes me wonder how well informed your master is. Naturally. And my master has seen your demise with their own eyes. Wait a second. What do you mean by... Oh! Mr. Yashiki. Sup. I was so shocked when you suddenly quit. You should have said something beforehand. Er, uh, sorry about that. By the way, I told my cousin about you. He was like super interested and he wants to meet you. Wanna hang out with him later? By your cousin, do you mean... The one who's the leader of a biker gang? Yeah! He's the leader of the Red Crest Gang. Isn't that awesome? You two are gonna hit it off so well. You guys are both like super fired up about stuff. So, what do you say? M well... You, woman over there. How dare you lure him to evil, degenerate behaviors? Eh? Who are you calling evil? You talking crap about my cousin or something? I'm gonna beat your hiney. Challenging me to a duel, I see. How reckless can you be? My left eye can see it now. The sight of you lying on the earth while begging for my forgiveness. Both of you, calm down. Hey, you two. What's with all the commotion? A familiar angry voice comes booming out of the faculty room. Er, uh, not her. Nope, I am not gonna deal with that crap today. Catch you later, Mr. Yashiki. I shall be taking my leave as well. 
I cannot let my reputation decline over such trivial matters. See you later, Mr. Yashiki. Maruhashi and Abe flee in different directions. Chuh, running away so quickly. Oh, Yashiki. What brings you here? As I understand it, you're no longer a teacher here. Mr. Kanoi asked me to come by. Oh, I see. I'm sure you don't need to be told this, but you're an outsider now. Please do not wander around the school, and do not fraternize with the students either. Don't worry about that. I'll be heading home once I'm done with my business here. How are you doing, by the way? I heard you were absent from work the other day. That was a week ago, mind you. Of course, I've recuperated and I'm perfectly fine now. I guess my stress had been piling up. You're doing much better then? Because the annoying temporary teacher is gone. Exactly. I've been doing well thanks to you. Is what I'd like to say, but I'm still pretty stressed out. At the disappearances of so many students, I'm swamped with tasks. Which reminds me... I don't even actually have time to be talking to you right now. I'll take my leave then. Sorry for taking your time. Ahem. <clears throat> the courses you taught were... adequate. Thank you for all your hard work, Mr. Yashiki. Sakamoto leaves after saying that. I'm willing to bet that she would have said I did stellar if I had not screwed up and just told the students that the departed was real. Don't tell me. Are they calling me? When I return to the clock tower, the bell stops ringing. There's nothing strange on the first floor. Maybe it's coming from upstairs? I hear the sound of someone on the ladder coming from above. Someone's climbing down from the third floor to the second. Oh, God. Give me a break! This should be over already. The sun then moves to the first floor. And what comes down from above is... No way. You gotta be kidding me. Emiko Dorio. Michiho Kinokawa. It can't be. The departed... The departed soul should have been saved. Both of you shouldn't be here. Um... Who are you? After that. I bring the two confused girls back to the infirmary. 
And then... Together with Yasuoka and Mashita, who survived being attacked by the Departed, I asked the girls what happened. It's an informative conversation. They're the real Dorio and Michiho, not the Departed. Neither of them know how they ended up in the clock tower. The memories stop in August, when their bodies were stolen by the Departed. In short, to both of them, we're complete strangers. This is the first time we've ever met. After a while, Mr. Kanoe finally arrives. He seems pretty confused after hearing about the situation. But when he discovers the two students are alive, a gentle relieved smile widens across his face. He clutches my hands and profusely thanks me over and over again. I ask Mr. Kanoe to take care of Dorio and Michiho, and then I leave the infirmary. Both of them seem like they're genuinely the real girls. However, why do they still have that mark in the white hair? I mentioned it to Yasuoka and Mashita as we're heading out. Oh, really? I didn't see it though, and I doubt they can see it. Yasuoka thinks for a moment. Both of them have been controlled by the Departed for a long time. I wouldn't be surprised if traces of the Departed still remain on their bodies. I don't like the sound of that at all. Is there anything I can do? Hmm, let's see. I guess you should probably not talk to them. Huh? If the Departed really was saved, the mark and the white hair will eventually disappear. But if they meet you, the Departed's remnants might stir again. Nothing good will come of that. Your best course of action would be not to meet them. Do you understand? I know you're worried, but... Just leave the rest to me, alright? This case is over. There's no need for you to talk with them again. Besides, it's not like they know you either. That's true. I wonder what happened that caused this surprising outcome. I have no way of knowing. This is a matter that surpasses human comprehension. Most of the time, the people just die. <laughs> I don't really mind not knowing, though. The most important thing is that they're alive and well, even if they have lost their memories. Let's just celebrate that miracle. A week has passed since that night. Hello? It's me, Shuji Daimon. How are you feeling, Yashiki? That should be my line. Are you still in K-Hospital? No, I was discharged two days ago. I've mostly recovered. Mr. Konoe told me some stuff. I thought you might be curious to hear what he had to say, so I just wanted to phone you up and share it with you. Daimon proceeds to tell me what happened at Konoe Horror Academy after the case. Even though the departed was now gone, that didn't change the fact that four students went missing in a short period of time. 
Mr. Kanoe will resign from his position to take responsibility for the disappearances. It's a shame this wasn't really his fault, but he doesn't seem to have any regrets. Daimon was also given the first headmaster's journal that a relative of Mr. Kanoe found at their home. He said there was some interesting things written in it, so he'd bring it by sometime. And about Dorio and Kinokawa. In the end, the police didn't pursue the case, per the wishes of their parents and the school. They've been resting and recuperating in the dorm. They're doing well. They also have been speaking to a counselor, though we haven't seen any particularly unusual behavior. Eh, that's a relief. What about the two months of memory they lost? They've been diagnosed with memory impairment. They don't remember either of us. That's for the best. If they remember us, that'll only rebuild connections to the departed. Everything's good as long as they're alive. I understand that feeling now. If only you were a doctor. Daimon. Two souls who should have been claimed were saved. As a spirit doctor, you should be proud of your work. Thanks. I'll come visit you soon. I still need to hand off the journal. Let's have some drinks. Invite Hiro and Mashita as well. Just like old times in that red riding hood case. Catch you later, Yashiki. Phew. Knowing those two are safe and sound is more than enough for me. I simply hope they're able to enjoy the normal mundane life they led before the departed shattered their worlds. Who's showing up at my place at this time of night? My computer training with Ada is tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Is it Diamond already? When I opened the front door... Ichiho and Dorio are standing in front of me. How is this possible? How did you find me? Sorry for visiting you this late. You're Yashiki, right? Thank you for saving us the other day. Oh, yeah. What brings you here? There's something we want to ask you. It's about our lost memories. Memories. We heard some things from our friends in the dorm. They said Michio and I were helping you a lot recently. Is that true? We have no idea since we lost our memory. Be honest, lie, or remain silent. Let's be honest. Yes. Would you mind telling us what happened during that time? Th that... Eh, to tell you the truth. Lately, there's been this strange feeling lingering in the back of our minds. We wanted to figure out what it was, since we think it might have something to do with our memory loss. A strange feeling? Yeah, so like... I've always been into frogs, but out of nowhere I've come to love bugs. And that's weird. Michio touches her butterfly earrings when she says that. This is definitely something caused by remnants of the departed, so her fears were true, it seems. Well... What are you going to do if you regain your memory? What if you learn those missing memories aren't as blissful as you think? Still... We still want them back. I knew it. 
I can't betray my emotions, but internally I'm smiling wryly. Five months ago, I also went in search of memories that I had lost. I understand their need to know more than they realize. But... I can't support their efforts. This is what's best for them and everyone else. Sorry, but there's nothing I can share with you. Besides, doesn't your dorm have a curfew? You'd better go home. We break the curfew all the time. That doesn't bother us. And... I also broke the curfew when we were inspecting the M-Town shop. Huh? What? What am I saying? Inspecting the M-Town shop? That's... Are memories from when the departed commandeered their bodies slowly resurfacing as they speak with me? This is the worst case scenario. I can't afford to waste any more time with politeness. I don't feel like talking anymore. Go home, Kirunakawa. Dorio. But wait a minute. I feel like I remember something. No! Get out of here now. But... but... Just let it go, Michiho. Huh? Well, shit. Tensions got high, and in that moment I let something slip. Did you just... call me Michiho? <laughs> Kinukawa? That's not how you speak to me. Call me... Michio. Didn't you promise me that, Mr. Yashiki? D don't tell me. Yes, I remember everything now. I... I turned into the departed, didn't I? What in the world are you talking about, Michio? Not just me, but Hime as well. Come on, you remember it too, Hime. The love we had when we were the departed? That's not the part I wanted you to remember. Love? <laughs> Dorio? N no way. Was I? The Departed? But... I remember... Everything. Even when we went to the clock tower together. No way... I can't believe how easily they regained their memories as the Departed. Defeated and crestfallen, I accept that there is nothing more that can be done. It's too late for regrets. That being said, the best way forward now is... to support them and try to steer them toward the right path. The girls quietly drink the coffee I brewed for them. It's your second time making us coffee, huh? Brewed coffee really is much better than the instant ones. It's really delicious, Mr. Yashiki. You don't have to call me that. I'm not your teacher anymore. It's a habit I can't seem to shake, even if I was only doing it while I was controlled by the Departed. Same. They seem to be a lot more relaxed now. They certainly have an amazing ability to adapt to what life has thrown them, 
Seeing how Michio just accepted that she was suddenly a bug lover, I guess they must have prepared themselves to roll with whatever they'd learn after regaining their memories. Now, Doryu, Michio, there's a few things I'd like to ask you. Do you mind? Sure, go ahead. You're probably curious about a few things that we can answer, right? Just ask away. Don't hesitate. We also want you to know about the Departed's memories. We won't have peace of mind unless we do that. How are you two feeling? Same as usual. If anything, I feel much more refreshed now. It feels like the fog in my head is cleared up. I'm worried about this white hair, though. It stands out way too much. You can see it? Yep, same with the mark on Hime's face. I guess it's supposed to be the Departed's mark or something? Yeah. Just from piecing things together... The Mayumura sisters had bruises resembling mold all over their bodies, and their hair lost its color as they became more corpse-like. The mark and hair must have originated from the pitiful demise of the two sisters. Damn, this sucks. Hope my hair would go back to normal. Stop complaining, Michiho. It's already a miracle that we're even still alive. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> How much of the Departed's memories can you recall? Hmm, not everything. I guess we pretty much remember the most unforgettable moments. So, do you still have their painful memories? Yes. But we don't feel any negative emotions from them because you saved their souls. The painful stuff they experienced in the past just feels like a story or movie now. I heave a sigh of relief. If the loathing the brides felt during the wedding ceremony somehow remained in both of them, their psyches would have been crushed under that weight. Except for the painful memories, I still pretty much remember how I felt about some stuff. Like how I love bugs and... The Departed's love for you. But, Michiho... There's no point in hiding it anymore, Hime. And it's not like we can do anything about it. Because this feeling belongs to the Departed. Y you have a point. Ooh, thank goodness. You know... This is all thanks to the Departed. Ask how the memories returned. I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. You saved the Departed's souls. During their final moments, they gave us our bodies back. Oh, okay. But why though? That's something I learned from the Departed's memories. It's a pretty strong feeling. They were grateful to you, and they wanted you to know it. Like, they really, really wanted you to know it. The Departed felt grateful to me? You might find this suspicious, but do you know why we were able to get our lives back? It's because the Departed was completely smitten by you. At least that's what I believe. Love created a true miracle. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about all of this. I guess it means that all the struggles I had to go through to act as their husband were worth it in the end. By the time I finish asking all my questions, it's gotten pretty late. Thank you so much for listening to us, Mr. Yashiki. 
and for the coffee as well. I truly enjoy the rich smell now, as well as the complex bitter notes layered behind the creaminess and sweetness. Such a refined, acquired taste. I'll get you back to your dorm, it's already late. I'll try to talk to your dorm manager about the curfew breaking as well. Ah, uh, no need to mind that. Of course we have to, duh. Thank you very much, Mr. Yashiki, and I'm sorry for everything. I have no idea how these memories are going to affect you. So if you start to feel something strange or weird, you make sure to contact me. Got it? Understood. I might come here even if I have no business, though. I want to drink your delicious coffee. Oh, jeez. I already have enough kids to watch out for. Both Michiho and Dorio were saved. It remains unknown why the departed saved them both, though. Although they said the departed was grateful to me, I doubt that. This is just a hunch, but... The departed might have entrusted both their memories and love to those two girls. The dead do not only leave behind resentment. There are also times when their hopes and dreams linger on as well. Even if it was something the departed decided on a whim, it doesn't change the fact that those two girls are alive and breathing. Somehow, my actions were able to save lives that were impossible to save. A spirit doctor who saves both the living and the dead. If I can be the light for those who are trapped in the darkness, then I will be the spirit doctor, and I will reach out my hand to them. The Departed has been added to the gallery. Extra rumors of Princess Mock. Extra content. This story takes place after the end of the main story, where all Mock bearers are alive. However, your level, total souls, and the number of secret objects you have may differ from the main story. You can't save your progress from playing the extra content. Alright, not even going to say what the title is? Did you know? <clears throat> the Tokyo Loop Line is apparently haunted. The haunting spirit's name is Princess Mock. What? Oh, it's not a hoax, I'm telling you. One of my acquaintances saw it. One night on a weekend, they were driving on the Metro Expressway. A familiar road, a familiar scene. They were just on a normal drive. But then, they noticed something strange. There were no cars around. Isn't that weird? They're on the Metro Expressway, and nighttime on a weekend at that. Then they heard a strange sound over the sound of their engine. It sounded like the clop of a horse's gallop. Crazy, right? 
They timidly peered into the rearview mirror. And do you know what happened next? They saw a huge horse running their way. A feral horse that could even devour humans. A high-pitched, piercing voice echoed from down the expressway. Was it the voice of the one riding the horse? It was too dark to tell. All they could see was the train of a dress, illuminated by the street lights. The horse's footsteps were getting closer and closer, and now they could hear its rough breathing. The horse was going to overtake them at any moment. My friend used to join street races back then. They had confidence in their driving skills. And yet, they couldn't pull away from the horse. They didn't know what to do. Should they continue driving, or should they hit the brakes and give up? They felt like they'd die if they made the wrong choice. My friend held their breath. And then... They stepped on the brake. The beast raced past them. And continued galloping into the darkness. They've never taken the Metro Expressway since that day. Once you experience something like that, that feeling doesn't go away easily. Huh? I wonder what would have happened to them if they hadn't stopped then. Hmm. No one would know. Because if they chose to continue... Rumor has it, they'd have died in a terrible accident. And that's how the Princess Mock rumor goes. It was featured in Oparts a while ago. Believe it, or don't. What do you think? Pretty exciting, right? The young girl flashes a satisfied smile after finishing her story. She was neither joking nor bluffing. She seems to be enjoying herself. Rumors of Princess Mock have been running wild in each city lately. I actually want to look into it tonight. But I want the spirit doctor to help me too. Oh, don't worry. I'll make sure to pay you. I wasn't asking you to do free labor. No, I don't need your money. Just answer my questions. Sure, ask away. Who are you? And how did you get in my mansion? A few days following the Konohihara Academy incident, one night, a young girl showed up at Kujo Mansion out of the blue. Without even so much as an introduction, she started talking about Princess Mock rumors. And here we are now. Oh, did I not tell you? My name is Ko Hazuki. Oh my god! I came all the way to H-City after hearing about you from Kashiwagi. So she's an acquaintance of ours. I guess I should ask her some questions first. Hmm? You want to know about me? 
I live in Kamakura Ward, a third year at Shoma Junior High. My birthday is on Halloween, October 31st. My favorite books are Uparts and horror novels. My hobby is going to haunted places at night. I love nighttime. There are thrilling things that you can only see at night. Like spirits, UFOs, or the beautiful moon. Between what she's told me and her hoodie, it's obvious that she's into occult things. You see, I once wondered... What would I do if I was abducted by a UFO when I was taking a night stroll? Would they perform body modification surgery on me? Me. <laughs> she has quite the imagination. Okay, what about you and I? You seem to know I. What is your relationship with her? We're represented by the same agency. I am an idol trainee. I haven't made my debut yet, though. I is so beautiful, don't you think? Not only beautiful, but she's also good at singing and dancing. Her performances are top-notch. No wonder men are obsessed with her. She's also got great fashion sense. Judging by the way she gushes about I, she must look up to her. And what brings you here on this horrible night? I heard about you from I and read your featured article in Oparts. I came here because I'm interested in you. I'm the type of girl who can't hold myself back once I've decided to do something, you know. Why does it have to be this late at night, though? I'm busy. I have school during the day and practices during the evening. And the spirit doctor is a night hunter, so I figured it's best to meet you at night. A night? What? I know your true identity. You're actually a skilled exorcist who hunts spirits lurking in the darkness of the night, aren't you? Come again? And wow, to think you live in this big mansion all by yourself. Are you the descendant of vampires from Transylvania, maybe? It'd be awesome if you truly were. Give me your autograph, please. Hehe. <laughs> Is she for real? If she is, then she's on a whole nother level. In any case, Spirit Doctor, I plan to investigate Princess Muck tonight. Sorry, I know this is super sudden, but can you help me? No. You better stop while you can, it's dangerous. Thanks for your concern, but I've made up my mind. I won't quit. Her eyes are lit with a determined fire. Even if I were to refuse her offer, she'd probably just go and look for the spirit alone. Nothing's likely to change her mind, if that's the case. Thank you. The character Kaoru Hazuki has been added to the character file. And just like that, I decide to help Hazuki investigate this Princess Mark who has been supposedly haunting each city. Ah, a familiar sight. Say, Hazuki. Do you have any leads? Of course I do. According to Adam Love... Adam... what? A frequent commenter in the occult forums. They wrote about Princess Muck. Oh, so Adam Love is a person's name. That's a weird name. I mean, all forum use names are like that. 
By the way, Adam loves that Princess Muck tends to show up at haunted spots. Like where? Dunno. That's why I'm planning on hitting up all the haunted spots in H-City. If you hadn't come, I'd have to walk. I'd have had to walk to them all on foot. <laughs> I think this girl will be touring H-City in the dead of night, going on nothing but this unreliable piece of information. This girl's absurd. Do you know any haunted spots around here, Spirit Doctor? Please take me to them. A few places come to mind. They are places I investigated during previous cases. Fine. We'll end the investigation if we don't find anything. That means you give up and go home. Are we clear? Okay, let's go, host. What should I do now? I don't know much about this kid. I don't know much about this kid. Should I ask her some questions? You're trying to be an idol, right? Do you want to be an idol like I, or...? Hmm... I do respect her, but that's not my goal. I want to make the most of what I have. What do you mean by that? I want to be a mysterious, yet charming idol, like spiritual phenomena and UFOs. I want to be an occult idol. Occult idol, huh? So, are you going to pretend to be a ghost in white clothing, or what? Yeah, and that's the problem. There's a lot of ghost stories out there. Ghosts, aliens, UMA, Tsuchi Tsuchinoko... I don't know what the theme I should go for. And that's why tonight... Hmm? What are you going to do tonight? It's nothing. Come on, let's hurry to the haunted spots. Oh, okay. Let's go to Konohara Academy first, the most recent place. It's been a while since I've come to the school late at night. Fortunately, it looks the same as usual. So this is Konohara Academy, huh? I told me about it. Doesn't the spirit called the departed haunt this place? That's all in the past. Things have calmed down now. I see. So you truly are a spirit hunter. NG. Please don't give me another strange nickname. Spirit Doctor is plenty for me. Oh my goodness. Look who's here, Mr. Yashiki. Tempted by the inviting night breeze, I decided to go for a walk. To think I'd meet you here, this must be fate. You haven't changed at all, Abe. As tiring as it is to talk to him, I can't deny that he's a knowledgeable fellow. He might know something about Princess Muck. I've got to ask him. I introduce Hazuki to Abe. An idol trainee? Who cares about that? I'm not interested in worshipping idols. I'm interested in you, though. Did you do the writing on that talisman yourself? Obviously. Each stroke is filled with my heart and soul. Whoa, amazing. You've got pretty handwriting, too. I actually write down Heart Sutra once a month. 
But my handwriting is so ugly, it's basically unreadable. That means your devotion is lacking. You need to believe the spirit of living in the tip of your brush will drive away the bad spirits before writing the sutra. Only then will your handwriting naturally improve. Oh, I see. From what I can tell, you should be able to see things. I have high hopes for you, young lady, with the galactic disc on her chest. Yep, you better trust me. Is it just me, or do people who have imaginations that run wild tend to be compatible with each other? It was not a good idea to be doing this right after I did four hours of reading. Ask about Abe. Like I said before, I imagine a walk. There is no better place to meditate than the calm darkness that suffuses the night. Suffuses? Going on the night stroll sounds nice. Did you happen to see ghosts or something? No, this neighborhood is pretty quiet. Because Mr. Yashiki just exercised the worst one. You really are amazing, Spirit Doctor. True, the Spirit Doctor is the greatest of all. Both Azuki and Abe are staring at me with awestruck gazes. This is really uncomfortable. I want to turn and run away. I tell Abe about our situation and ask him about Princess Mock. Yes, I've seen the post. If I remember correctly, Adam Love claims that Princess Mock is haunting H City. Is that post trustworthy? If I'm being completely honest, it's difficult to tell. Because the person didn't provide any evidence to back up the claim. However, the person who made the post is none other than Adam Love. Care to elaborate? Adam Love is a frequent commenter in the forum. They know a lot about the Mark incident. They even know some strange things that aren't included in O parts. It's possible this Adam Love is someone who's involved with the case. Someone who is involved with the case. Of the Mark Bearers, the only ones who go to online forums are Moe and Aso. Or they might be someone who heard such stories from the people involved, like myself. I guess that's all the information I'm going to get from Abe. I write down all the things we talked about after parting ways with him. Asuki and Abe seem to get along well because they're oddly similar to each other. Aware of Adam Love's post about Princess Mock's appearance in each city but saw no evidential basis to the claim. Adam Love might be connected to the Mark, which could mean they're actually Moe or Eita. Abe and Hosuke also know the Mark story. Then, we leave Konohara Academy. Say, Hazuki, you're not going to call your parents? Oh, it's fine. Daddy is on a business trip in America, and Mommy is in Hokkaido for shooting. I see. You must be lonely. Not really. I'm used to it. I'm pretty happy because I can go out at night freely. Goodness. I don't think I can convince her otherwise. Be careful when you're out at night. Terrible things can happen, and there are some mistakes that can't be fixed by anyone. 
I know that. That's why I always carry a buzzer and a stun gun with me. The other day, I gave a guy who was following me a rude awakening. G glad you're safe. Upsetting her might be dangerous. Thanks for your concern, Spirit Doctor. Shall we go to the next haunted spot? You know, now that I think about it, we never did see that kid. A ruined school building stands in the darkness. That building used to be H Elementary School. Don't tell me this is... The place where you and I fought spirits? Well, yes. Weren't some crazy animal experiments performed here? Meat and organs were splattered all over. Dark red blood stained everything. Did that room really exist? Yeah, that was something I never want to experience again. Spirit Doctor. Talking about meat and organs made me hungry. I'm really craving yakiniku now. Can we go eat something after this? Let's look for places that serve thigh meat. You are one strong girl. Huh? Mr. Yashiki? Tsukasa, that's his name. But we get Moe instead. Good evening. Why are you here, Moe? I'm here for work. And what are you doing here? With a girl at that. This is also work-related. Moe might know something about Princess Muck. She knows a lot about spiritual stuff, after all. May as well ask her while I'm at it. I introduce Hazuki to Moe. And so you like occult stuff too, huh? I can sympathize with you. And you're an aspiring idol at that. You're gonna get big in no time. Whoa, what an honor to hear that. I never expected to have Moe P say that to me. Hmm? Do you know Moe? Why would I not? She's a popular high school journalist who made a brilliant debut through Oparts. It's not that big of a deal. I only got my own corner in that magazine because the editorial department pitied me. No way, you're amazing. I mean, your article from last month. What about it? The occult maniacs become fast friends and are talking merrily. I'm glad they're having fun. I think they're talking about zombies and black magic. I'm here to take photos. The editor-in-chief asked me to take photos of an abandoned school at night. But if you think about it... What kind of person would ask a high schooler to do something like that? You'd probably get caught in some kind of regulations. But it's fun, right? Well, yeah. Going to a haunted school at night is exciting. I'll let Moe know about her situation and ask her about Princess Moth. I know of her, obviously. She's been featured in Oatworts before. I never knew she haunted H City, though. Apparently, the information's posted on an occult forum. Don't you visit that kind of forum a lot? Hmm, I haven't been able to lately, though. I'm pretty busy, sorry. But my editor in chief or the readers usually bring things up to me if the rumors are good. And I haven't heard anything from them. It might be a hoax. You know, there are people online who like to make up stories just to get attention. 
It could be the case. I'll keep that in mind. I guess that's all the information I'm going to get from Moe. I wrote down all the things we talked about after parting ways with her. Moe has a corner in the monthly magazine Oparts under the name Moe P. Moe and Hazuki both love occult stuff, so they get along well. Neither Oparts editor in chief nor readers are corroborating rumors about Princess Mock's appearance in H City. It might be a hoax. Then we leave H Elementary School. Look, you gotta say the Moe P with an um, an exaggeration on the P. Talk to Hazuki further. I'm so jealous of you. You've been able to meet so many spirits. Hazuki starts talking before I can even open my mouth. I want to see a spirit too. Maybe I'll know what kind of thing I want to have. Spirits aren't just some kind of hobby. They can kill. But still... I know you might be confused by what I said. But I'm serious. 100,000% serious. That's okay. I feel like I've gotten a little bit better understanding of her. It seems like her pursuit of the idol career she wants is what drives her to do all these crazy things. Risking her life for her own goals. She reminds me of the mark bearers who challenged all those bizarre incidents. Time to go to the next place. Let's believe we will meet the spirit next time. I hope we don't. While waiting for the traffic lights to change, I jot down all the things Hazuki told me. An idol trainee who is trying to debut as an occult idol. Because her parents are rarely at home, she's free to traipse around at night. Hazuki is trying very hard to find a good theme for her occult idol concept. Oh, I didn't even look at your stats. Oh. You know what these are? These are stats from before NG, so, you know, we can't judge. There's some character growth that can happen. That's Tsuchi Noko Keychain, Hazuki's favorite item. A large serpent keychain. She apparently saw Tsuchi Noko in her garden when she was six. And this keychain represents her quest to find another. Does get extra spiritual power though, so. Oh boy, Manhole Street. Ooh, are we going to get to meet Banshee? The road we're taking at the moment is called Manhole Street. As we can all see, there are an unusual number of maintenance holes in this street, hence the name. No need to tell me, Spirit Doctor. There's an underground vault down here, right? You sure know a lot, huh? I mentioned it when she talked about the Mark incident. And... There was a secret experiment that was conducted there, right? What? It's no use hiding it. I knew everything. Dr. Diamond and Lady Hero, a dastardly duo of evil scientists plotting world domination. They're planning to launch spiritual weapons left behind by the Imperial Army, aren't they? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm excited. This bizarre statement is probably based on the stories I told her. Asuki's power of imagination must have warped it into this tale. Oh, we're going in the manhole. As if on cue, one of the manhole lids opens up. Yupsy daisy. Oh. 
Emerging from the hole is none other than Hiro. Huh? Yashiki? Who is that kid beside you? Never seen her. Oh, so after your escapades with high schoolers, now you're on a night date with a middle schooler? Jeez, you better cut this out. I refuse to help you if you get arrested for this, you know. Boy. White coat, glasses, a lady? Are you perhaps the evil scientist lady hero? I'm a fan. Give me your autograph, please. What the hell is wrong with your date? Jeez, eyes, friend. Her dilute. I mean, imagination is much stronger than others. Just let her be. She doesn't mean any harm. I don't get it. Youngsters are scary. Anyway, what brings you here, Yashiki? As a general rule, Hiro doesn't really care about spiritual stuff. I doubt she knows about Princess Mark. It doesn't hurt to ask, though. Hey, let me introduce you. I introduce Hazuki to Hiro. I see. So she's like Moe. This kid's got more screws loose than her, though. By the way... She stares hard at Hazuki's chest. Do you have any complaints? Well, I'm not as big as I. I'm not talking about that. Do you like UFOs? Oh, she's looking at the printing on her clothes. Yeah. I love mysterious things like ghosts, UMA, and Tsuchinoko. Hmm. You're still young, but you don't get it. The most crucial thing in life is the inquisitive spirit and curiosity. Without that, the human race is finished. Don't hesitate and take action as soon as you feel the spark of curiosity. Got it? Yes. Aha, what a sincere answer. Don't encourage this girl like that, hero. I don't think it's right to dampen a child's curiosity. Isn't it an adult's responsibility to support whatever absurd things a kid does? Uh, you know, I'm surprised. So, why are you here? Inspecting this vault, of course. I do this once a week. I've got Banshee helping me, too. I bait him. Ito Banshee is a man who lives in this underground vault. It was also Mark Bear who helped me out in my previous case. How's Banshee doing? He's doing fine. Too fine, if I must say so. He's been rummaging through food to prepare for his winter sleep. His skin is glowing. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I just love that that is the exact same voice line from Deathmark 1, and they just made it quieter and put reverb on it. See? <laughs> He's doing great, right? What was that? It's the cry of an underground man, isn't it? Wow, a resident of darkness craving blood and meat. I can't believe an underground man really exists in each city's vault. I've got to see it with my own eyes. Gotta go. Hey, wait. Uh, stop her, hero. But hey. Together with hero, we both catch Hazuki before she goes deeper into the vault. After much persuasion, she's finally able to calm down. 
Oh, but the underground man. Is this because I told her being curious is important? No, this is pretty much her normal behavior. Oh, what a frightening kid. I mean, this is pretty pointless, but would you happen to know about Princess Mark? So here are our situation, and ask her about Princess Mark. The heck is that? Never heard it before. Well, I'm not surprised. Mark 1 is the speed of sound. The standard speed of sound traveling through air is around 1200 kilometers, five times faster than the bullet train. Are you saying this princess can travel at that speed? There's no way. But she's probably as fast as a car. So calling her Princess Mark is an inaccurate exaggeration, then. This really irks me. Do something about it, Yashiki. Hey, it's out of my hands. There's nothing I can do. I guess that's all the information I'll be able to get from Hiro. I write down all the things we talked about after parting ways with her. Asuke loves paranormal stuff in general, and the UFO print on her hoodie is evidence of that. Hiro inspects the underground vault along with Ito Banshee on a weekly basis. Hiro doesn't know about Princess Mark, though she is irked by the inaccuracy of the name. Hiro's information. Then we leave Manhole Street. After some time, this is it. You've checked out all the haunted spots nearby that I know of. The only remaining place is the T Oyama Rest Area, but that's far away from H City's downtown. Let me ask you one thing. Are you satisfied yet? Nope. We haven't found Princess Mark. But Hazuki, Moe had doubts about the rumor. Abe also said it had no evidence. But it's a post from Madam Love. They know a lot about the Mark incident. I don't think it's a hoax. It's absolutely worth looking into. Adam Love. This mysterious person is the whole reason we're running around here at tonight. Who in the world is that person? Are they someone involved in the incidents like Abe guessed? I drive down the mountain road. Trees surrounding us on both sides. The trees look the same as before. But it feels like the malice has faded. Oh, I remember this place. Ah. Uh, isn't that the rumored phone booth? Me pick up a call from Miss Spirit and answer their question. Then they tell you the place you're looking for. Didn't you exercise the spirit already? Too bad. It'll never happen again, then. Did you hear that from I? Yep. And Oparts, too. It's mentioned in Moe P's corner. I see. Say, Spirit Doctor. Why do you look troubled? Oh. I just feel like it's time to identify who this Adam Love person really is. What? Aren't you interested, Hazuki? Well, of course I am. Here's my deduction. Suspensive act. If I fail this, I can no longer call myself a spirit doctor. Who is Adam Love? A few names pop into my mind, though I'm not really sure about some of them. 
I wonder if I can convince Hazuki with my explanation. Is it you? I tried to defend my conjecture that Adam Love is Kaoru Hazuki. Adam Love is you, Hazuki. Huh? What makes you think that? Abe said Adam Love knows a lot about the Mark incident. And you seem to be quite knowledgeable of it. I mean, I heard it all from I. You made the Princess Muck post as Adam Love. Then, you used that as a foundation to ask me to investigate with you. That's my guess. What do you think? Intriguing. It makes sense, though. Azuki remains composed, though she seems convinced by my theory. I want to believe this is the right choice. Well, a possibility is a possibility. Is there any clear evidence that connects me with Adam Love? Evidence, huh? I feel like there's something about Hazuki's face and clothes that give it away. How should I explain it to her? If I'm able to give her a rational explanation, Hazuki might just break down and confess. What would the face have anything to do with it? The hair, the face, I mean, it's gotta be the hoodie, right? I focus in on Hazuki's hoodie. I get the feeling if this doesn't succeed, it's going to be a misunderstanding. My point at Hazuki's hoodie. More specifically, the print on her torso. The letters under the UFO read, Adam Ski Type. An Adam Ski model. If I remember correctly, that's the name of the disc-shaped UFO. Crap. Adam Ski. Adam Ski. Is that why your name is Adam Love? You're totally right. I expected no less from you, Spirit Doctor. You got me. Looks like this is the right choice. Survived. And my reputation is untarnished. You were the one who posted the Princess Mock rumors on the thread, right? Did you really witness what happened in H-City? It's all a lie. I posted him because I wanted to get your attention. And why did you do that? Because I really want to see a spirit. You have a connection with spirits, don't you? So I thought I'd be able to see one if I toured the haunted spots with you. Is it perhaps because... You're searching for a good theme for your cult idol dreams? Yep. Oh my, I just realized. I'll let the story tell it. I need to decide on my theme before I make my debut. But I can't come up with any ideas. I don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Hazuki's expression turns downcast. She's been positive the entire night. It's my first time hearing her whine. She seems to be really worried. Is this also why she's been wandering alone at night? Spirit Doctor. 
Sorry for causing you trouble. The Princess Mark we were hunting is nothing but a creation of her own imagination. And with the night growing deeper, we no longer have a reason to tour H-City. Let's return to Kujo Mansion for now. Are you feeling better, Hazuki? Yeah... The trains have stopped running. I'll take you home. You live in Kamakura Ward, right? Thanks. Azuki remains disheartened. She only has herself to blame, but... She must have been desperate. I don't really have the heart to blame someone who went to such great lengths. Is there any way I can cheer her up? I'll show her my work area. Do you want to see where I work, Hazuki? Workplace. Hideout. Do you have, like, talismans, a fire altar, and demon swords? No, I don't have any flashy things like that. Just tools to make dolls. Dolls. I think I'm interested. And so we head to the second floor. I open my own room and invite Hazuki in. So this is your hideout, huh? It's cleaner than I imagined. Are those the doll making tools? Yep, those are my carving knives and chisels. Where's the doll? I told me there's a talking doll in this mansion. Sorry, but I can't show her to you. The female doll Mary is currently sealed in the mansion's storehouse. And the other female doll I got from Konohara Academy is in Yasuoka's care. She wanted to inspect something about it. Oh, what a shame. That reminds me. And if you want to see how she looks, you can look at the framed picture over there. For real? So this is the rumored... Hazuki's intently staring at the photo. She remains expressionless, as if her soul has been sucked into the picture. Hazuki? Feeling worried, I call out to her. However, she doesn't respond. I shake her shoulders hard. Hey, what's wrong? This is it. This is exactly what I want. Yeah, okay. That's what I figured. Mysterious, yet adorable. The very essence of an occult idol. This is awesome, hehe. <laughs> Asuka yells as though a dam inside her has burst. I get why she's so excited. I've decided, Spirit Doctor. I'll go with this theme for my occult idol persona. It... Oh. Glad it was helpful. I've got to go back home and expand on the idea. I'll take my leave then. Thank you so much, Spirit Doctor. Azuki expresses her gratitude and quickly bounds out of the room. Silence has once again returned to Kujo Mansion. Oh, my goodness. What a wild kid. 
Hang on a sec. Is she going home on foot? Amakura Ward is 20 kilometers from here. How many hours is she planning on running? Hmm. She'll probably come back soon. And that was how the investigation of Princess Muck, which began after the sudden visit of a surprise guest, ended. It turns out that Princess Muck isn't in H-City. <coughs> However, it's not like she never existed, though. Who knows? She might be running down the expressway tonight. And those who don't give way to her will. Ah. That was a nice, pleasant extra story. So, that was Deathmark 2. Um, there's obviously going to be spoilers for Deathmark and NG, so if you don't want to hear that, pick off the video. Okay? So, starting with gameplay. I like that they tried to do a 2D side-scrolling nature of it, as opposed to the block-by-block -block movement, but I feel like there was a really big missed opportunity there. You can even kind of tell in my videos that initially I thought, oh, there's going to be stuff in the side-scrolling part of the game, but nothing happened. And as I began to realize that, it's like, oh, there's really nothing scary about the side-scrolling part. And I think that's a result of the different direction that the game kind of went. Because if you look at the game as a whole, there is practically no areas where you are on the time limit. Suspensive Axe? No, it's based off of your choices and how much spirit power you have. Um, the Moldy Tooth sections, with the Black Tooth. I mean, yeah, those are a time limit, but it's really inconsequential. I mean, you're not being chased by anything, the tooth is very easy to find, and then you can always just go back to the infirmary afterwards, so... There's really no point when you are pressed for time. It's sort of a double-edged sword where Yes, it does give the player more time to review all of the material and make sure that they make the correct choices, but at the same time, it removes that, I guess, like, heart-pumping experience, you know, that you can only get when you are pressed for time. Another change that I noticed is this game felt a lot less scary than the other games. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's gruesome scenes, like whenever we are seeing the spirit's first victims. It just didn't necessarily feel as scary, I guess. And I mean, come on, the first spirit... The head looks like a choo-choo jelly. It looks so squishy and adorable. Personally, I am fine with it being less serious, but I know that some people are going to not like that. Especially since the main appeal of the Spirit Hunter series is like, it's scary, it's terrifying and suspenseful. Whereas in this game, it's like, yeah, there is scary parts, but it's kind of dampened a lot by the amount of light-hearted moments there are in it. Personally, not a bad thing, but I know that it's going to get on the nerves of some people. <laughs> I mean, especially when you've got choices, like in Hanako's case of, Oh, I'm being strangled by Hanako. Here, let me fold this paper crane with one hand. And even just the dialogue for when you're successful, it's like, Miraculously enough, I was able to do it, and I'm impressed by it. It takes away from that horror aspect. Actually, I guess it's almost like Scooby-Doo, almost, with how goofy it is at times. But yeah, you know, I was fine with it. I enjoyed it. Um, I think some fine-tuning is needed so that it preserves that sort of nature of NG and Deathmark, while also making it feel less of a chore or less headache-inducing to make the right choices. I'm still going to have bad memories of constantly getting the bad ending for Shimio's case because I forgot to look at a bush. But yeah, overall, I think the game is the way it is because it tried to shift more into that RPG element, but the RPG element kind of made it less scary, you know? 
Moving on to characters, I like that they brought the Mark Bears back and expanded upon their character more. It kind of felt like Deathmark 1 was an introduction to the characters, and Deathmark 2 is like, okay, now we get into the roots of sort of what's going on with them. And also their relationship with Yashiki and what happened with that. I know it took away from establishing a relationship with the targets of the Departed, but I know that they wanted to focus more on Yashige's relationship with his friends, and of course making that the thing that we want to protect, as opposed to these random new characters that we don't know much about, and not saying that's necessarily a good thing, but I can see why they did it the way that they did. I think they did it best in NG, you know, we are introduced to new characters in NG, but those characters are all given enough time to fully develop, you know. I'm sure that there's like some secrets and other stuff we don't know, but they are given time to at least get the big stuff, the motivations, kind of building a relationship with the main character. It seems that the issue with Deathmark 2 that some people might have is that there's too many cooks in the kitchen. We have a lot of returning characters from Deathmark in addition to the new characters, and Unfortunately, trying to build up a relationship with the new characters while also expanding upon the old characters is not exactly possible without making the game a lot longer. I know that there was the whole thing with Michio and Dorio, but those are just two characters. And let's keep in mind that not all of the Deathmark cast made it in. It's almost like Michio and Dorio took those two slots. In terms of the atmosphere, I don't know, it kind of felt... Not boring, but it felt samey. Um, to kind of steal Manly Badass Hero's thoughts. In the other games, there was a lot more variety in locations. Whereas in this game, it's mainly just the school and the forest. Yeah, there is the dorms, the hospital, and the cemetery, but if we translate that to the death mark and the block movement system, those are like a few blocks each, which is really small. And that's just a result of this entire case revolving around the school, so... I think maybe they could have made the old building more interesting? But yeah. I do prefer the amount of variety that we had in Deathmark and NG. As for the spirits, I personally liked them because they each had unique abilities, which gave them a sort of more supernatural feel. Like in Deathmark, all of the killing methods were just like, oh, I'm going to eat you, or I'm going to choke you, or drill holes in you, or something like that. In this one, though, it's like, I'm going to slash you with water bending, or make scissors burst out of you, or have mushrooms blow you up. It was more cool and felt supernatural. Now, design-wise, um, aside from The Departed, they all kind of felt meh. I mean, I like that they're sticking to the source that they're based off of, but I think it could have been a bit more interesting. I don't know. Like, when you look at Deathmark and NG spirits, like, they look like spirits. They do not look human. There's some human aspects there, but you can tell that these aren't people. But in Deathmark 2, I, I don't know. It, it didn't feel quite the same. Mr. Kokori was somewhat interesting, but I don't know. They just didn't quite scratch the itch that I was hoping for, that you get whenever you see the spirits in the Spirit Hunter series. Again, with the exception of The Departed. That was peak design. Wah. Beautifully grotesque. Like, you've got, like, the bottom half of just the thing crawling out of the stomach of the, I guess, what's supposed to be the female doll, and it was just so gross and so awesome. Especially the intro animation for that. I will say, I love the intro animations for each of the spirits. It would have been nice if they combined that with what they did in NG, where you have like some scenes leading up to facing the spirit. Like in the first case where you're on the boat, rowing away from the shrine in the middle of the lake, and the Urashima woman is chasing you. That would have been nice to have that, followed by the intro scene, followed by, you know, facing the spirit. Story-wise, I mean, it's it's kind of the same, you know. Although I will say, The Departed kind of, or at least their motivations, feels like a mix of Mary and Kakuya in NG. Because of Mary, it was like, oh, I want to, like, devour you and taste your fear and kill you, you know. And with Kakuya, it's love, but it's like a twisted form of love. 
I mean, for goodness sake, the bad ending there is that she bangs you for the rest of eternity, <laughs> making you lose your mind, you know? It's like a yandere. But yeah, combining those two desires into one, which I think is nice. Um, but aside from that, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get anything on Mary or the Night Parade of a Thousand Demons. I think that was mentioned in Deathmark or NG, but there was, other than the returning cast, there isn't really much connection to Deathmark and that storyline. It gives me the impression that the two in the title means this is the second big case that Yashiki worked on, and not that it was a continuation of the problem that was established in Deathmark 1. The only other thing with the spirits is I'm kind of disappointed with the bad endings for each of their cases. In NG, the scenes were really gruesome. Turtles coming out, or your partner gets bisected, or they are like warped and twisted around by a bunch of wires. Like, it was really gruesome. I don't know why they made them more tame. Well, except for Yashiki's, but I mean, that's the bad ending. It should be as bad as it was. Um, but yeah. I don't know, maybe it's because they wrote themselves into a corner, since it's supposed to be the departed that does the killing, and not the spirit itself. Maybe that was why? But I mean, there was like the other scene, so I don't know, it's a mystery. But yeah, as for music, I like that they added more music in the latter half. It keeps it less stale, it kind of gives different feelings, you know, like, oh, things are getting even worse. Especially when you face the departed, because that one was just like so dramatic. But yeah. Overall, I enjoyed the game. It was a fun experience, I got some laughs, I enjoyed seeing the characters come back from Deathmark, and I hope in the next Spirit Hunter game that we get more new characters, and that if there's any characters that make a return, either from Deathmark or NG, or Deathmark 2, that they play more of a supportive role. Kind of like how Yasuoka and Ada were just more of support, and not part of the main cast. And yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for sticking with me through this entire series, and wherever you are, I wish you a good day, evening, or night, and stay safe everyone.